This is the story of Dr. Lillian Heath. Not only was she one of the most important figures in Rollins and Carbon County, she was also one of Wyoming's most famous people. She was born in Wisconsin in December 1865. Soon after her birth, her family was on the move and ended up in Iowa, then Laramie, Wyoming, and finally to Rollins, Wyoming, where she would live the majority of her life. Her father had received a job in Rollins painting locomotives for the Union Pacific Railroad. One of the major events of 1878 saw thousands of people traveling to the higher altitudes of the West and the open lands of the Midwest. This event was a total solar eclipse. Rollins was situated in the perfect place for viewing the astronomical event. The July 29, 1878 eclipse is heralded as a landmark astronomical event. The opening of the higher altitude viewing spots in the Rockies included Pikes Peak, allowing scientists to see these events from a vantage point they had never been able to see. While Rollins is not located in the high Rockies, the open plains and unobstructed view of the sky attracted several prominent figures that would cross paths with the eight-year-old Lillian Heath. Henry Draper, one of the earliest astronomical photographers, wanted to test out his photographic skills on the historic eclipse, came to Rollins alongside inventor Thomas Edison. Edison was one of America's most prolific inventors. It just so happened that they both stayed in a Rollins home, the same Rollins home that served as the residence of the Heath family. As a young girl, Lillian Heath had already rubbed elbows with titans of American innovation. While in high school, Lillian entered the field that would be her livelihood and passion for the majority of her life. She became an assistant to Dr. Thomas McGee, a Union Pacific doctor. Her father, in his connections with the Union Pacific, was able to get this unique opportunity for her. Before she graduated high school, she observed McGee and learned what it took to be a physician. Everything from early plastic surgery, where McGee rebuilt a man's nose from the skin from his forehead, to different methods of administering anesthesia to patients. In 1881, however, Lillian Heath would be linked to one of the most infamous figures in Carbon County's history. George Parrott, also known as Big Nose George an outlaw that had terrorized Carbon County's railroads, stagecoaches, and citizens, had killed two lawmen who were looking for him. In cold blood, George Parrott murdered Robert Widowfield and Union Pacific Detective Tip Vincent. Shortly after the murder, a massive reward of $10,000 was put out for George Parrott and his cohorts. He was arrested after bragging about the murders and transported to Rollins for trial. In 1881, he attempted an escape from the jail, but was unsuccessful. After news of the escape attempt broke, a mob of 200 people, nearly one-fifth of the town's population, broke into the jail and extracted George from his cell. They took justice into their own hands, stringing him over a telegraph pole for a short drop and a sudden stop. Thomas McGee was tasked with doing the autopsy on Parrot, and Heath was there to observe. For her efforts, she was given George's skullcap. The rest of Big Nose George was buried in a whiskey barrel. This skullcap would be a part of Heath's life from then on. She would use it as a doorstop, a pen cup, and a conversation starter. This had all happened before she graduated high school. However, upon her graduation from Rollins High School, she decided on a medical career. After a brief stop at the University of Colorado, she completed her coursework in Iowa at the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Being one of only three women in the graduating class, 
she was able to achieve her license in 1893 and returned to Rollins to open up her practice. She became Wyoming's first licensed female doctor. She opened her practice out of her family home, but found more resistance from other women about her profession than she did from men. Heath notes that at one point, several women would not pay her for her services because they were expecting a male doctor. Despite this, she trekked on, making house calls at all hours of the night and day, and oftentimes riding 40 miles to visit patients. Due to the nature of rural medicine, she often traveled disguised as a man and carrying a pistol for protection. Often, she would be called to grisly places and needed to travel somewhat anonymously for long distances. By 1909, Dr. Heath retired from her daily practice of medicine and decided to switch careers. However, she did keep her medical license active until she died. She moved to Denver to model for the famous Daniels and Fisher store. From there, she moved to Lamar, Colorado, to operate a hotel with her husband before moving back to Rollins. Her medical prowess came calling again when she would travel to Denver during the 1950s to participate in hospital inspections. During this whole time, she was holding on to Big Nose George's infamous skullcap. In 1950, a whiskey barrel was found buried during excavations in Rollins. Upon its opening, a pile of bones fell out. A certain skull was produced, missing its skull cap. Lillian Heath was summoned to match the skull cap with the skull, confirming the identity of the skeleton as that of Big Nose George. By this point, the skull cap was being used as an ashtray by Lillian's husband. Sadly, in 1962, Dr. Lillian Heath passed away due to complications from a fall. At the time of her death, she was 96 years old. Dr. Heath's story is one of those stories that show that the cultural boundaries of time prove meaningless. Dr. Lillian Heath found a niche and a need in a community, and she filled it. She is far more than her connection to Big Nose George. She became a fixture in the Rollins community and Carbon County and influenced the lives of many people over her 96 years.